Yeah. Well, in my world and in the world you're describing, that was the age of authority. That's when Eric Severide could talk to you like this. That's when, yeah. like, like Discovery is a, is a good example. You asked about it, and I'll, I'll tell you. First of all, John Hendricks, a friend of mine who created that channel, you would love. He did this in his garage, basically. I mean, the story's incredible, how he talked Malone into getting some transponder space or maybe his Westinghouse and, and le- mortgaged his house to buy some documentaries from Australia and started beaming all that stuff down. I asked him years ago, I'm like, what was the, like, what was the guiding principle behind this, th- this business model? And of course, you know, Discovery has since purchased Warner Brothers. You know, they're the biggest entertainment company in the world today. And it started with John Hendricks saying one goal to satisfy curiosity. Mm. That's it. Mm. Everything, Discovery. Everything I do must line up with a traditional definition of what a discovery is. It's the, it's the satisfying. Mm. of curiosity yeah and so when i pitched dirty jobs i was coming in on the heels of what you're talking about there was still in nonfiction. it was richard attenborough it was jacques cousteau it was jane goodall it was you know the discovery brand was very much a reflection of some of the the greatest naturalists and historians and uh, you know, astrophysicists in the world. They they deferred to experts, and then they hired guys like me to narrate shows, and we could sound even more official. And so you you had this dance, this production dance, where you had a credible sounding voice uh, and an expert at the center of the thing. Dirty Jobs was not that. Dirty Jobs was what if the expert is a septic tank technician or a welder. What if the expert is a skull cleaner or a golf ball retrievist? It's a job. Or a sheep castrator, an oral sheep castrator, which we can get into if you want. Um, Like, what if they become your source of credible information? And what if the host somehow morphs from this authoritarian expert into a guest with a bunch of questions? Mm. So this conversation happened uh, between me and some of the guys over there in in 2003, and they bought it. They didn't buy dirt. They didn't like dirty jobs. They took it really to shut me up. They wanted three episodes and and out. The deal I made with these guys was rooted in this paradigm of me saying, "Send me out into the world to go on adventures." And, and, mm. and don't ask me to know more than I know, but just let me look under the rock and let's learn together. Yeah. And so they said, okay, we're going to, you know, you'll go to the Titanic with James Cameron. You'll climb Kilimanjaro. You went to the Titanic? No. And I'll, <laughs> very nearly, it was canceled a month before because Dirty Jobs finally hit. But prior to that, I went to Egypt. I was exploring uh, tombs with Zahi Hawass. I was at the pyramids. I was in the wow. some of the greatest, the largest undiscovered graveyard in Bawiti, the Sands of the Dead, where they found the mummies with the golden masks, and nobody knew who the hell they were because it wasn't attached to any dynasty. And who were all these people with golden masks on their faces? And so Discovery would send me to do these these shows and they were great meanwhile this this hot mess that looked like a german porno called dirty jobs winds up on the air and it rates like through the roof but the problem in 2004 was that and this is a kind of cognitive dissonance that always is super interesting right when a when a big company or a brand or a political party or really anybody, realizes that the thing their audience wants is not the thing they want them to want. Mm. That's amazing. Right. And it happens all the time. And, sure. And most of the time when it happens, you know, the the uh, uh, you just walk it behind the barn and shoot it, and you and you never hear about it. But Dirty Jobs actually got on the air before it was shelved for a year. And it was during that year 
that I went on a series of adventures for the network doing this other Why thing. Why was it shelved? It was shelved because it was deemed off-brand. 